Hello, hello. So this evening, we're going to be having our uh, second last lesson. We are about to finish. It's very, very close from the end. We are getting there. Tomorrow, guys, we're going to be having our last lesson of this course. Uh, but for tonight, of course, we have to continue working. And we're going to be doing quite some advancement, advancements, hopefully. Um, the most important thing is that we still have to cover some topics related to the past. Um, past situations are, of course, very important, something that we must learn how to express, how to talk about um, past situations. Um, so yeah, that will be the main focus of tonight's class. We will be going uh, over questions with um, the past of B, as we did last night, a little bit roughly. Um, so we're going to be covering it completely tonight, questions with the past will be, also contractions, how we are going to be pronouncing some contractions, and why are some contractions known as one-syllable contractions, and why are others mentioned as two-syllable contractions. Um, we have our last conversation for this course as well, uh, and we also have double H questions with did, was, and where. Um, those will be like the main topics. Then we have a reading, then we also have a vocabulary exercise, but those are relatively easy for you guys. So I think there is not going to be, it's going to be a no brainer, you know. But before we get to that, before we get to talk about those topics tonight, I think I'm going to have the chance to ask you the last um, question for this course. So I think that the question I will be asking this evening is going to be, um, hopefully you guys have a take. I hope that you do have a take, but it's going to be related to something that is coming up. You know, the World Cup is just around the corner. And uh, I think that even if you're not a, a soccer fan, you may know or have an idea of what teams can be um, some of the candidates or some of the best teams in order to go ahead and take the win of the World Cup. So tonight, I want to hear who will be your favorite pick for winning the World Cup and also your top three. All right, so your favorite pick and your top three. Of course, your favorite pick is going to be the favorite and you're going to mention two others. See, ¿Sí? entonces vamos a hablar acerca de eh, la... Copa Mundial, yo sé que es algo que tal vez no todos son fanáticos del fútbol, ¿verdad? Pero alguna idea podemos tener más o menos de qué va o cómo, cómo, cómo se desarrolla. Entonces, eh, mencionar cuál es nuestro favorito y el top 3 que podamos tener. So that's the question for tonight. I hope you guys have an answer for that. And uh, I'm going to start asking this evening to Alfredo. So tell me, Alfredo, who are or which are your top three national teams to get the World Cup? My favorite. Yes. My favorite country. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brazil. Okay. Um, Argent Argentina and uh, Belgium. Belgium. Oh, okay. Very nice. So you mentioned two of my favorites as well. Brazil, Argentina, and Belgium. Good. Yes, that, that is very, very proper. Yeah, I like Argentina and Belgium. On my top three, if I'm allowed to mention it, I have Argentina, Belgium, and England. Those, those will be my top three. Argentina, Belgium, and England. But yeah, Brazil, Argentina, and Belgium are also a very, very good pick. All right. Thank you very much, Alfredo. So okay, welcome. now let's yeah. hear from uh, Juan. What do you think, Juan? Do you have a top three of teams that you consider to be capable enough of winning the World Cup? Good evening. Good evening. My name is one, and I want to, to get up in Germany. Okay. The second one is England. Mm -hmm. uh, Third one can be Belgium. Sorry, what? Belgium. Oh, Belgium. Oh, okay. Good. Very good. 
So yeah, Germany, England, and Belgium. Once again, mentioning some very, very strong teams. They seem to be well prepared, most of them. I think England this time around may have a good performance. Hopefully they will have a good performance because yeah, England has been has been part of the uh history of soccer for a very long time. So let's hope, you know, this time around they're going to be able to do something good with their national team. Okay. Um how about Victor? What do you think Victor Galamez? Your top 3 of teams to win the World Cup. Sí, el top 3 de los equipos que podrían ganar el Mundial este año. Hey, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Eh, Brasil. Ok. Eh, eh, England. Uh -huh. eh, eh, Croacia. No sé... Eh, Como se dice, ¿verdad? Croacia. Eh, Croacia. Eh, eh, France. Uh -huh. eh, 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 maybe. Eh, Noruega. Norway. De los... I, I think they're not. Participating this time. Creo que Noruega no la no llegó esta vez. Según recuerdo, no llegó Noruega. Estoy un poco desfasado ahí con los sí. clasificados, pero. Ah, porque sí llegó de, sí de... Dinamarca. Dinamarca made it, but Norway didn't. But yeah, I, I take it. You know, Brazil, uh, England, and France. And you also mentioned, I remember the other one. Pero Brazil. En, Argent en Argentina. Argentina, yeah. Those will be very strong. Nice, very nice. Okay, so very strong teams, very strong pick. Um, thank you, Hugo. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, how about um, Marco? What do you think, Marco? Do you have a pick for teams that may be able to win the World Cup this year? Well, well, my first candidate to win the World Cup is uh, France. Okay. Then is Argentina. And the third one, I think, is let's see, Brazil or Germany. Okay. Nice. Yeah. I mean, of course, if we take out the curse of the champion, because normally that they say that when uh, a team or a, 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 a national team has been champion of the World Cup, they are normally cursed and they cannot win it the next year. But we will see, you know, France may be the first one to break that curse. or Not the first one, but maybe the one who break that curse in a long time. Because I know that previously, I think it was Uruguay, the one who won uh, World Cups back to back. But yeah, maybe France is going to do the same this time around. Very nice. Um, and yeah, those picks are also very, very strong. And I think they are highly considered, you know, to come and take the win this time around. Okay, uh, Adriana, how about you? Do you have a pick of a top three uh, national teams that may win the World Cup this year? Well, honestly speaking, I don't like football. I don't know why, but I don't like. Okay, so no picks at all? No. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. That's all right. Okay, then. Um, how about Ruth? Do you have a favorite three teams or a, a favorite pick for teams that may get the win this time in the World Cup? Bueno, creo que tenemos problemas con el sonido, Ruth, porque si no, no te quedé encendido el micrófono, pero no logro escuchar nada de este lado. Así que vamos a intentar quizás luego. Um, Kevin, how about you, Kevin? Who do you think may be the winner for the World Cup this year? I don't like football too. Okay. I don't see play soccer. Okay, that's all right then. Okay, solo un detalle. Cuando decimos que no nos gusta algo tampoco, 
Normalmente no decimos to. Sí, eso es algo que en el grupo pasado se me olvidó. Se los iba a decir porque hubo alguien que dijo lo mismo, ¿verdad? Tipo, I, o sea, en el caso fue decir que, que le parecía que Argentina también. Y dijo, I think Argentina. No, que Argentina tampoco. Sí, Argentina tampoco. Entonces, sí, y dijo, I don't think Argentina too. Pero cuando decimos don't o decimos algo que es negativo, vamos a utilizar either. Sí, either. Que eso significa, ¿verdad? Tampoco. Entonces, eh, para, o sea, en, en, en reemplazo del to, utilizamos either. Pero muy bien. Ok, guys. Thank you for the ones who shared their perspective and their ideas on who may be the winner for this year's World Cup. Now, we're going to get started or continue working on questions with the past. So, B, this was what we had started yesterday and we are trying to wrap it up um, right now. Okay, so as I was saying yesterday, we have, for example, this ones that are very simple, uh, very straightforward, yet yes, no questions. And we simply are going to be asking them when we want to know specific information about people. Uh, as for example, we're born in the US. That is something very specific. You know, you are stating what you want to know. And in that occasion, you simply expect the person to answer yes or not. Of course, in English, you don't do that. You don't you only say yes or not. You say, for example, yes, I was in the case of the past uh, uh, in the question received by the first person. You say, no, I wasn't, if it's a negative answer. Um, and then, for example, something like this. Was your brother born in, in 1984? Uh, this is about a third person. And we're going to be using was because this one is referred, you know, as uh, for a third person of um, the singular. Therefore, we're going to do was. Was your brother born in 1984? Question is straightforward. The information that is required is stated in the question. Therefore, we do not need to establish more information. What we have to do is simply to answer if the, uh, if the question or the answer to the question is a yes or if it's a no. So that's all we have to do. Then we have, uh, were your parents born in Incheon? Were your, born, your parents sorry, born in Incheon? I think it's Incheon. So were your parents born in Incheon? This one is about a second person, or sorry, a, a third person, but in this case, it is the third person of the plural. Sí, es una tercera persona, pero en el plural. Entonces, aquí, ¿verdad? A pesar que sea en algún sentido similar a la pregunta, eh, acá, esta anterior, esta solamente acerca, o trata, perdón, acerca de una persona. En cambio, esta otra es acerca de dos personas o Puede ser dos o más, pero mientras eh, ya tenemos, ¿verdad?, un noun aquí que sea plural, ya no vamos a poder utilizar el was, sino que vamos a utilizar where, ¿sí? Were your parents born in Incheon? Uh, dígame, Víctor. Teacher, una consulta. Eh, eh, esa palabra eh, Incheon, así en español, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. ¿Qué significado? Porque yo la traté de de traducir, pero no me daba no. traducción. Es un, es un lugar. Es un lugar en Corea. Ajá, ni, ni como lugar, o sea, no me lo, no me lo tiraba como, como que es, o sea, si era lugar o qué, ¿verdad? Sí, no, es, Entonces, es, un, no. es un lugar, o sea, es una ciudad, pues va, es una ciudad en, en Corea. Así que por eso no le, no le va a dar un... Um... Una traducción. Ajá, una traducción. Es, un, ah, okay. es una ciudad en South Korea, ajá, uh -huh. Incheon. Incheon, ah, oh, va, ok, uh -huh. ok. Sí, es por eso. Thank you, teacher. Ajá. Uh -huh. Sí. Es como, digamos, alguien en inglés, por ejemplo, esté aprendiendo, o sea, español, y le digan, ¿verdad? Tus padres nacieron en Cuscatlancingo. O sea, y la persona quiera traducir qué significa Cuscatlancingo, pues se va a perder, ¿verdad? No va a encontrar una traducción para la, para la palabra Cuscatlancingo, porque pues es el nombre de, de un lugar. Así que así, por eso es que esta es así. Una cosa okay. que podemos hacer para poder tener facilidad, digamos, de, de identificar este tipo de cosas es fijarnos, ¿verdad? Que por ejemplo aquí tenemos una I mayúscula, entonces eso significa que esto es un nombre propio, ¿sí? Así que por eso, o sea, nos podemos guiar, ¿verdad? Para tener una idea de que puede referirse a un lugar... Mm -hmm. 
Interno, y, o sea, una localidad interna, digamos. Ajá, de, de, de un país específico, por decir algo. Ok, ajá, ok, entonces, sí. Por eso. Eh, esa era mi, mi, mi duda, por eso es que, que eh, ahí disculpe ahí que no, no hay la problema. interrupción. ¿verdad? No, no hay problema, en absoluto, no hay problema. Ok, okay. entonces you. sí, you're very welcome. Entonces, ajá, por eso, ¿verdad? Eh, es, esta pregunta se refiere directamente a eso, ¿verdad? A saber si los papás de esta persona nacieron en esa ciudad. So, yeah. Were your parents born in Incheon? Ah, perdón, y por eso solo quería terminar de aclarar, por eso mismo que tampoco podríamos encontrar tan fácilmente una traducción para esto, ya que se refiere a una, a una ciudad. Ok, so we say yes, they were, o oh, no, they weren't, depending on the answer. Sí, sí, o sea, si ellos nacieron allá, ¿verdad? Ustedes van a decir yes, they were. Si no... Well, you simply say, no, they weren't. Yes, no, they weren't. Okay, next one. Where were you born? Where were you born? Estas son preguntas abiertas. Como siempre les digo, cuando tenemos double H questions, we are not going to be answering with yes or no. We're going to be answering with a specific lines. If somebody asks me, where were you born? Está preguntándome, ¿dónde naciste? Así que yo no voy a contestar, ¿verdad? Yes, I was. Si alguien me pregunta, where were you born? I am going to say, I was born and then stayed where I was born. For example, in my case, I was born in El Tránsito. Now, I want to hear from you guys, where were you born? Sí. Vamos a empezar con Juan. How about you, Juan? Where were you born? I was born in San Salvador. Okay. Jose Valle, where were you born? Uh, I was uh, born in, in San Vicente. In San Vicente, good. Um, Kevin, where were you born? I was born in La Libertad. Okay, good. Uh, Victor, where were you born? I was born in Esaltepeque. Okay, good. Um, Adriana, where were you born? I was born in San Salvador. Okay. Alfredo, where were you born? I was born in San Salvador. Great, great, great. Um, Ingrid, where were you born? I was born in Casaltepeque. Okay, nice. Um, Marco, where were you born? I was born in San Salvador. All right, very, very good. So you see, Each of you guys has a different answer to this question, ¿sí? Pueda que sea similar, ¿verdad? Pueda que alguno de ustedes, o sea, haya nacido eh, en el mismo lugar que el otro, pero no significa que todos vamos a contestar de la misma forma. Esa es la diferencia que va a existir siempre con las double H questions comparado a las yes-no questions. En las yes-no questions ustedes solamente tienen la opción de decir que sí o que no, ¿verdad? En cambio, en las double H questions, each, each, each of you is going to have a different answer information different perspective and way more tricky if i ask you for example when were you born o sea cuando nacieron verdad eso es algo todavía más eh, distinto o sea cada uno de ustedes muy probablemente va a tener un año y si quieren decir la fecha específica porque también se puede eh, sería una fecha distinta muy probablemente so here we have when when was he born the person is asking about a time Therefore, the answer is, he was born in 1985. He was born in 1985. What city were the, they born in? Ahora, aquí esto, normalmente lo que está pasando acá, verdad, es que estamos eh, siguiendo la línea, o sea, aquí a los, a los pares, ¿verdad? En este caso, digamos, acá la primera pregunta, were you born in the U.S.? La persona probablemente contestó, no, I wasn't. Entonces preguntamos, where were you born then? O sea, si no naciste en Estados Unidos, ¿dónde naciste? Then we have, I was born in Korea. Ahora, si tenemos ya, por ejemplo, la idea del hermano. Was your brother born in 1984? La persona nos contestó, no, he wasn't. O sea, no nació en ese año, ¿verdad? Entonces aquí yo le pregunto, when was he born? ¿Cuándo nació? He was born in 1985. Entonces tenemos ahí ya otra interpretación. Then we have, 
Were your parents born in Incheon? Entonces la persona nos puede, nos puede contestar, no, they weren't. Sí, no nacieron allí. Then we ask, what city were they born in? ¿En qué ciudad entonces nacieron? Then we say, they were born in Seoul. They were born in Seoul. So that is the difference between uh, B questions or yes, no questions, and open questions or double H questions. All right, moving on, we have contractions. Esto es una de las cosas que, a las que me interesaba bastante llegar, es contractions. Las contracciones son algo muy común en inglés, o sea, estas son quizá las que más vamos a utilizar en realidad, estas que están acá, pero eh, eso no deja de lado, ¿verdad? Perdón, el hecho de que las contracciones sean algo muy, muy común que exista en el idioma. Ahora, importante tomar en cuenta que algunas, a pesar que las contracciones, la idea de estas es recortar la cantidad de palabras que se dicen, algunas suenan como si fuesen una sola sílaba. O sea, como si la palabra o, la, o lo, las dos palabras que están unidas fuesen una sola sílaba. Hay otras que normalmente cuando se utilizan el sonido que se emite es como si fuese una palabra de dos sílabas, ¿sí? Las contracciones, como les digo, normalmente se usan para poder acortar, acortar ¿verdad? los sonidos o las palabras que se van a mencionar. Pero hay algunas de ellas que suenan como si fuesen dos sílabas y otras que suenan mucho más homogéneas como si fuesen solamente una sílaba. Casos específicos, bueno, aren't, ¿sí? Aren't, aren't, suena como si fuese una sola. Don't, mucho más claro, ¿verdad? Don't, don't. And then we have can't, can't, mismo. And then we have weren't, weren't. Sí, estas cuatro suenan como si fuese una sola fila, sílaba. Diferente a isn't, isn't. O sea, se, se escucha una, una pequeña separación entre uno y el otro, ¿verdad? Isn't, same as wasn't, wasn't, sí, wasn't. La forma de pronunciarla tiende a darnos la idea de que no necesariamente es una sola sílaba. And then we have doesn't, doesn't. Este quizás sea la, el ejemplo más claro, ya que es una de, la, de las contracciones más largas. So it would be doesn't. Then we have didn't, didn't, sí, didn't. Esta muchas personas dicen didn't, oh, perdón, did, didn't, didn't, no, no me sale ahorita. Pero lo pronuncian de una forma un poquito distinta. Pero la mejor forma de decirlo, la forma más apropiada sería el didn't. Sí, didn't, didn't. O sea, vamos a ver, lo voy a escribir acá. Casi como si estuviesen si estuviese diciendo esto, miren. Sí, didn't, didn't. O sea, esa sería como la, como la forma más apropiada, ¿verdad? De pronunciar el did not. Eh, o sea, hablando claro acerca del pasado. Now, uh, the way in which we are supposed to practice or the way in which we are supposed to uh, pronounce some of these sentences would be the following. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Si se fijan ahí, cuando estamos utilizándolas ya en el contexto, cómo se puede notar un poco más la diferencia, ¿verdad? O sea, decimos, they didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Sí, o sea, el weren't suena como si no estaba tanto. O sea, una sola cosa, una... Podría ser alguien casi como si fuese una sola letra de doctor, ¿verdad? They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Sí, no cenaron porque no estaban hambrientos. They didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry. Then we have, I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. Una vez más, don't, para el, el, la primera que es entendida como una one syllable, You don't necessarily notice this contraction. I don't like coffee. See, I don't like coffee. Very simple. Because, uh, and she doesn't. And this one has or takes a little bit more of a space, a little bit more of pronunciation to it. And she doesn't like tea. I don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea. Then we have these aren't, aren't, once again, these aren't, they're swimsuits. They can't swim. These aren't their swimsuits, they can't swim. O sea, aren't, su, se escucha cierto, casi casi llega a ser un, un two syllable, pero no necesariamente tiene tanta pausa. There is not much pause to it. So you say, these aren't, see, ¿sí? these aren't their swimsuits, this can't, they can't swim. These aren't their swimsuits, they can't swim. It's very smooth the way aren't is pronounced. Then we have, 
he wasn't here yesterday wasn't very strong and it has like a like a little heel in the middle of the pronunciation so we say he wasn't here yesterday and he isn't here today and he isn't here today okay so those are the ways in which we're supposed to pronounce um these sentences now i want to hear some of you guys pronouncing them uh i think i will give uh the people who just joined um carlos and giovanni you two guys just came so i will give you the chance carlos if you would like you can do the first two sentences and giovanni you can take the last two sentences so carlos can you please help us with this uh, uh, the first sentence only yeah the first two the first two the first okay those. okay yes they didn't eat dinner because they weren't hungry okay. i don't like coffee and she doesn't like tea okay very nice very very nice they sound very smooth you see when you say didn't i mean there it makes that sound but weren't doesn't really make like a difference on the pronunciation and you get to hear like it's only one simple thing that is being pronounced. Um, Giovanni, how about you? Please do the last two. Okay. Uh, these aren't uh, their uh, swim suit. They can swim. Uh, we, no, he wasn't uh, here yesterday and he isn't here today. Okay, very good. These aren't their swimsuits. En esta sí se escucha un poquito más a la hora de que la pronunciamos ahí, Giovanni. O sea, lo normal sería como decirlo un poquito más, quizá un poquito más acelerado, ¿verdad? Para decir these aren't, ¿sí? These, these aren't their swimsuits. Uh -huh. These aren't their swimsuits. Para que suene un poco como si fuese de verdad una sola sílaba. Ahora, tampoco es que esto nos va a meter en problemas en nada, ¿verdad? Si nosotros decimos aren't y nos acostumbramos a decirlo así como un poco más pausado, no significa que es algo malo. Simplemente es como consejo en la forma en la cual normalmente se entiende la pronunciación de estas contracciones, ¿verdad? Entonces sería, these are in their swimsuits, they, they can't swim. Y en la otra, he wasn't here yesterday and he isn't here today. Así que bien sencillo, ¿verdad? Nada complejo en ninguna de esas dos. Now, we have this conversation. In this conversation, we're going to be um, hearing some double H questions with did, was, and where. First, we're going to read this conversation, then we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to practice the conversation. So we have Melissa and Chuck. Those are the two people being part of it. Um, the conversation should go as following. So, Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there, too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990. I went to college here. Oh, what was your mayor? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money and I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh, okay. So once again, una vez más, ¿verdad? So Chuck, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990, I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money and I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh, okay, so that's how the, the, the pronunciation or proper pronunciation of this conversation is supposed to go. The only word that I consider to be hard here will be this one, hairstylist. Sí, estilista, hairstylist. El resto, ¿verdad? Siento que está bastante sencillo. Ahora, primero vamos a, como les decía, a tener esto, o sea, vamos a hablar un poco acerca de esto, que son algunas de las preguntas que se presentan en esa conversación, como por ejemplo, where did you grow up? Aquí tenemos un phrasal verb, ¿verdad? Grow up, que se refiere a crecer, ¿sí? ¿Dónde creciste? Where did you grow up? Cuando alguien una vez más nos pregunta de esta forma, where did you grow up? Entonces nos está preguntando acerca eh, de una situación acerca del pasado, ¿sí? ¿Dónde? 
y esto eh, básicamente lo que nos va a ayudar a hacer el colocar este did aquí es a que el resto de la oración también tenga sentido, o sea, como para preguntar, ¿verdad? Específicamente eh, acerca de un, de un detalle de alguien y que además esto, el resto de la oración esté en su forma del presente. Pero el objetivo principal del did en este caso es para darle como ese énfasis a la información que se está solicitando, ya que es un detalle bastante específico. Así que sería, where did you grow up? Se significaría, ¿verdad? ¿Dónde creciste? En español es cierto que no se necesita de ninguna clase de, um, de adición especial para que las preguntas tengan significado. Pero en inglés, en muchas ocasiones, cuando utilizamos este do, o aquí en este caso específico que es did, o sea, en el pasado, lo que hace es que le da un énfasis mayor a la información que se está solicitando. Así que eso es algo importante, ¿verdad? Sobre todo en las preguntas del pasado, no necesariamente en el presente. Así que está, where did you grow up? ¿Sí? Uh, here, the normal answer is going to be with a regular verb. O sea, cuando preguntan algo como esto, se va a contestar con el verbo principal eh, de, la, de la pregunta. O sea, aquí, por ejemplo, el verbo es grow up. Recordamos que en el pasado, entonces, vamos a cambiar eso y sería grew up. ¿Sí? No vamos a decir, ¿verdad? Eh, grow up también. Sino que sería grew up, porque eso sería en el pasado, significa crecí. So, if you have grown up in Texas, you can say this. I grew up in Texas. Sí, crecí en Texas. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. When did you come to LA or to Los Angeles? When did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1990. I came to Los Angeles in 1990. See? Then we have, why did you become a hairstylist? Why did you become a hairstylist? Because I needed the money. Because I needed the money. Así que si tenemos estas preguntas así, con did, otra de las cosas importantísimas a tomar en cuenta es que la respuesta se va a entregar con un verbo aparte del de do. O sea, no vamos a tener que decir do, ¿verdad? Porque no es una pregunta de sí o no, sino que la, la, el verbo que vamos a utilizar normalmente, o sea, sobre todo en preguntas como where and when, será el verbo que esté en el medio de la oración, o, perdón, de la, de la pregunta. Si es why, cuando preguntamos algo con why, es complejo porque pues why significa por qué y cada quien puede tener sus razones, ¿verdad? Detrás de algo, detrás de una acción. Así que si yo digo why did you become a hairstylist, o sea, esta pregunta va a ser mucho más abierta en la cuestión de la, de la respuesta que vamos a obtener. Why did you become a hairstylist? You can say because I needed the money. You can say because I loved the industry. Because I um, grew up surrounded by hairstylist. Cada una de las respuestas va a ser distinta cuando alguien nos pregunta con el why. Pero si es el when, usualmente vamos a poder utilizar ¿verdad? el verbo principal de la pregunta para contestar. Okay. Si es when, si es uh, where, si es who, si es how. O sea, cualquiera de las, de las preguntas eh, aparte de why básicamente nos van a poder dar, ¿verdad?, esa pauta. Otra, otra de, las, de las palabras que también nos puede complicar un poco y que no vamos a necesariamente utilizar eh, el verbo, ¿verdad?, que está siendo usado en la pregunta, cuando alguien pregunte con ella, sería which, ¿ok? Which es, es similar al why en ese sentido. Bueno, por otro lado, están las preguntas con double H, pero que incluyen alguna versión del be. O sea, en este caso, las versiones del be sería were or was. Ahora, how old were you in 1990? Cuando alguien me pregunta esto, es bastante más fácil contestar. How old were you in 1990? I was 18. Me están preguntando acerca de mí. Entonces, I say, I, I was 18. So, in 1990, I was 18. What was your major in college? Esta es una pregunta abierta, pero a la misma vez, no necesariamente nos va a obligar a dar una respuesta tan larga, ¿sí? sino que es casi casi como medio cerrada, por decir así, porque la respuesta, si bien es cierto, debe ser específica, debemos tener contexto para contestarla, podemos contestarla fácil solamente utilizando el was. What was your major in college? It was, and then you mentioned your major, dependiendo de cuál sea verdad su especialidad eh, en la universidad. So it was drama, it was economics, it was... Um, 
I don't know, English, yeah. So it was um as a medic, yeah. So any 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 uh major you may take can be mentioned here. And then how was college? How was college? It was great. Aquí tenemos más específico, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo estuvo? ¿Cómo fue eh, el tiempo en la universidad? ¿Cómo fue la universidad? Y otra de las cosas, si se pueden fijar, eh, que, o sea, en inglés no siempre se utiliza el artículo de, ¿sí? O sea, porque aquí, aunque signifique cómo fue la universidad o cómo eh, estuvo la universidad, no se utiliza the. No, no decimos the college, ¿sí? sino que solamente decimos college. How was college? Diferente si estamos hablando acerca de un, una universidad específica. O sea, si yo, por ejemplo, quiero saber, eh, alguien ha estado recorriendo diferentes universidades, pero yo quiero saber acerca de una específica, o sea, puedo decir, how was the college by the mountain? ¿Sí? ¿Cómo estuvo la universidad cerca de la montaña? Es el caso en el cual se va a utilizar... Eh, el artículo, pero si no es para ser específico de esa forma, no utilizamos artículos, simplemente hacemos la pregunta así, en general, ¿verdad? How was college? And then the answer for these two is with it because the, the question is based around college. Así que por eso mismo no vamos a necesitar contestar con ningún otro, otro pronombre, sino que it nada más, ¿verdad? O sea, este it, claro, se puede reemplazar por college. O sea, ustedes pueden decir aquí, por ejemplo, bueno, en este caso no. Aquí sería, college was great. Yeah, college was great. Pero eso suena maleducado, aunque no lo crean. Porque si ustedes contestan directamente con la palabra que alguien utilizó en la pregunta, o sea, puede sonar como que no quieren contestarle. Como si alguien me pregunta, por ejemplo, how was your day? Y yo solo digo, my day was great. O sea, suena como que yo estoy contestando por compromiso. En cambio, si utilizo el it, it was great. Se suena como si la conversación ¿verdad? va siguiendo una línea, ¿sí? una línea bien trazada, así que por eso es más aconsejable utilizar it que utilizar el reemplazo de eh, pues la palabra ¿verdad? que se encuentra en la pregunta. Bueno, ahora sí, me gustaría saber eh, si pueden por favor obtener sus capturas de esta conversación que en este momento la vamos a practicar en los grupos. Así que, if you guys can, please go ahead, make your screenshots, get them. And I will be opening the breakout rooms now. And we're going to have only like five or seven minutes to practice this. So please make sure you go ahead and practice. Um, I will be opening the breakout rooms just about now. So you guys may join now whenever you wish. And uh, let's see how we do. Hello. Hi, Carlos. Hola, hola. Hola, compañeros. Estaba viendo si podía compartir la pantalla, pero no encuentro la carpeta. Eh, ¿Alguno de ustedes puede compartirla? Ahí está. Gracias, Kevin. Eh, Okay. Bueno, ahí está. Eh, um, puedo, no empezar sé, yo, primero. puedo empezar yo con Melissa, si gustan. Los solo hombres creo que vemos en el grupo. Y alguien no sé quién me acompaña. Yo voy a hacer shock. Ok. Uh, okay, entonces empiezo. So, shock. Where did you where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990. I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. 
I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a hairstylist? Hair, hair stylist? Because I needed the money and I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, uh, okay. Entonces los otros dos compañeros. Ok, ¿quién empieza entonces? Ok, pues, entonces como Melissa, ¿quién quiere ser tú? ¿Tú? Si quiere yo, yo, yo sí. Ok. Entonces, yo, okay. entonces empiezo. So, tú, where, where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come? To Los Angeles? In 1990, I went to college here. Oh, what is the ma major? Major. Uh, drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. So why did you become a stylist? A stylist? A uh, because I needed the money and I love it. Look, what do you think? Well, ahora no sé quién más, compañeros. I'm Melissa. Está bien. Comience, compañera. So, Chuck, uh, where do you grow up? Oh. Grape of Texas. I was born there too. And when did okay, okay, sorry. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990, I went to college here. Oh, that was your major major. Okay, uh, that's interesting. So why did you become a hair stylist? Hair stylist, hair stylist. Because I need the money and I love it, look. What do you think? Well, oh, I start. Eh, bueno. okay, ya, 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 me, ya me pude incorporar ahí las disculpas que me fue el internet. No hay pena. Ah, vale. Da, pues si gusta, si practique con Kevin o con Antonio. Ok. ¿Cómo se desconectó? Vean? Sí, sí, ahí las, las, las disculpas. O pues si gusta, Víctor, ¿puedo, puedo ser choque en esta oportunidad. Ah, va. De acuerdo, Carlos. Ok, inicio. Sí. Eh, ok. So, choc. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Texas. I was born there too. And when did you come to Los Angeles? In 1990, I went to college here. Oh, what was your major? Drama. I was an actor for five years after college. That's interesting. Uh, so, so why did you become a hairstyle? Because I needed the money and I love it. Look, what do you think? Uh, well, mm. ahí está. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, les di un poco más de tiempo de lo acordado porque es que lo que pasa es que el otro grupo, o sea, ustedes ya están acá, ¿verdad? El otro grupo apenas iba empezando eh, la práctica, les costó bastante hacerlo de compartir la pantalla. 
Así que por eso los, los hice esperar un poco, aunque también noté, ¿verdad?, que pasó el problema con, con Víctor, así que creo que funcionó, ¿verdad?, para que pudieran practicar todos. Eh, pero igual, es pues probable que el otro grupo se tarde un poquito, pueda que esperen ellos hasta el final, porque creo que todavía faltaban algunos de practicar, así que ya lo vamos a tener, ¿verdad?, que estén llegando por acá. Pero mientras tanto, mientras tenemos a los demás que se unan, vamos a ir revisando eh, el resto de la información. So, the rest of the things that we have here, um, well, the questions with pass, I think th that's already clear. Now, we have also this information. Here we have uh, some, well, information that is crucial about schools in the U.S. Here, of course, when you say, when you mention classes, it means like subjects, okay? Subjects or things that, specific subjects that you can learn. Uh, when you mention schools, it means levels. Sí, o sea, los diferentes niveles. And places refers to like specific rooms in, in the class or in, uh, sorry, in the school. Así que eh, aquí nos vamos a referir, ¿verdad? Como clases, literal, si, si se refiere, ¿verdad? A las materias o a las clases que ustedes toman. Um, when you talk about schools, se refiere, ¿verdad? A los diferentes niveles de escuela o diferentes niveles de educación que se tienen. And then places sería los diferentes, eh, por decirlo de cierta manera, lugares que pueden haber en una escuela. So we start with classes. What are the classes you guys see that are here in this, um, in, in this chart over here? Classes. ¿Cuáles serían algunas de las materias que ustedes puedan identificar de este lado? Math. Math. Okay. Math. That's one. Science. History. History. Okay, history. Oops, sorry. Science. History. Science. Science. Physical And education. Science. Uh, okay. Aquí solo vamos a poner PE, que ese es como el, más, el nombre más común que tiene para la physical education. Solo lo, lo referimos a él normalmente como PE. And uh, what will be another one? Is there any other? Gym. Uh, gym, okay, good, yes, gym, great. Oh, perdón, gym, 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 gym. There we go, gym. Physical nice edu education. Yes, el physical education, oh. eh, lo, solo lo coloqué como PE, que ese es como okay. la, el, ajá, el resumen, ¿verdad? The physical, okay. physical education. Okay, how about schools? ¿Cuáles son los diferentes niveles que ustedes pueden encontrarse acá? Junior high. Hay... Un momento, un momento, un momento. Solo voy a borrar acá esto. History, math, PE, and science. Ok, así para que tengamos más claro, ¿verdad? Qué es lo que vamos llenando. Uh, so, for the next one, you said high school? Junior high. Oh, yeah, junior high. Junior high. Elementary. Playground. Right. High. Elementary. Hide. Okay. Hide. Mm, no necesariamente. Después no. tenemos que encontrar lugares. Así que por eso uh, mismo. Uh -huh. College. College. Nice. College. Okay, good. Uh, let me just swipe them out. We have junior high. We have high. We have college. Oh. And we also have elementary. So now we're only going to go for places. Uh, we're going to look for some places in, around the school. And for this, we're going to see specifically which will be some places you guys can identify. There's only two left. Lunch room. Playground. Playground. Okay. Classroom. Lunchroom. And Classroom. No. playground. ¿Saben cuál fue la diferencia? Que había, tenían que ver cuatro de cada uno. Así que, ¿cuál gym. creen que? Exactly. El gym. Ese es el que está mal acá, ¿sí? Gym es de este lado. And then we have gym no aplicaba things. como gimnasia, teacher. Eh, es que gimnasia sería el PE, Physical Education. Sí. O sea, educación física, pues, básicamente. Ok. Ajá. So, PE, o Physical Education... Es el, el que en algunas otras escuelas lo llaman como gym, pero no es tan común que se llame gym, sí. O sea, es común que los estudiantes digan, we have gym today, sí, es común que lo digan así. Pero 
la materia en sí se llama PE, o sea, Physical Education, pero como les digo, casi nadie dice Physical Education, lo más común es también que digan solo PE, we have PE today, yeah. or we have gym, sí, pero o sea, cuando dicen we have gym, es que van a ir, ¿verdad?, al, 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 al área de gimnasio de la escuela, pero no significa necesariamente que la clase sea así, ¿verdad?, gym, gym. Pero sí, o sea, esas son la, la, las materias. Materias o clases will be math, history, and science, and PE. Then we have schools, junior high, elementary, high, and college. Esta junior high hoy ya se llama más, es más común que se llame middle school, ¿sí? O sea, elementary es la primera, ¿verdad? La, la básico, sí, es casi hasta el quinto grado. El junior high, como les digo, en algunos lugares de Estados Unidos aún se llama junior high, pero lo más común es que se llame middle school, o sea, como la escuela media. Eh, when we talk about middle school, we're talking about grades from uh, six to eight, I think, because it's only three years that you spend in, in junior high. And then you have high school, which is from ninth to 11th or ninth to 12th. Normally you have around three or four years that you're spending high school. And then of course you go to college. So it will be high school, junior high, um, high, In college. Then for places, well, places around a school will be a classroom, a lunchroom, a playground, and a gym. So those are the main places that you have. All right. So uh, let me see. I am going to clear all of them and move on to the next part. So this is only a reading. We're on, uh, this is basically what finishes the topics from, from, from the platform. Y como el objetivo era terminar, ¿verdad? Básicamente hoy con los temas. I am going to do the reading. Now, I'm going to give at least one of you guys a chance to do it. Or what we can do is we're going to be reading by paragraphs. All right? So each of you guys is going to be picking one paragraph to read. But I will do the first example. So here we have a reading about Ricky Martin. He is a very famous act, um, singer. And here we have some information about him. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, on December 24th, 1971. He was always a performer. As a child, he appeared in television commercials and he studied singing. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band, Menudo. He worked hard with them and he became very well known. But he left the group after five years. Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part on a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish-language albums. After this success, he moved back to the U.S. Back in the U.S., he appeared in an American soap opera and in the Broadway show Les Miserables. Then he made his first English language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, was on that album. Now, he's famous around the world, but he still works hard. He still, and he still loves singing. And he said to a reporter for the newspapers USA Today, I want to do this forever. Ok, como sé que algunos de ustedes no lo van a poder ver necesariamente dónde está, lo voy a elevar un poco. Así que una vez más, una vez rapidita uh, y un poquito más rápido de mi parte. So Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 24th, 1971. He was always a performer. As a child, he appeared in television commercials and studied singing. At the age of 12, he joined the Latin boy band, the Latin boy band Menudo. He worked hard with them And he became very well known, but he left the group after five years. Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part on a Mexican soap opera. Soon afterward, he recorded two Spanish language albums. After this, after this success, he moved back to the U.S. Back in the U.S., he appeared on, a, on an American soap opera And in the Broadway show, Let's Miss Her Alves. Then he made his first English language album. That album was called Ricky Martin. His biggest hit, Living La Vida Loca, was on that album. 
Now he's famous around the world, but he still works hard and he still loves singing. As he said to a reporter for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do this forever. Ok, vamos a ver entonces ahora. ¿Quiénes quisieran tomar parte en esto? Solo necesito un, dos, tres, cuatro, seis personas. So six people who would like to be reading uh, part of this uh, paragraphs. O me toca asignarlos a mí. Ok, Kevin, Ingrid. Who else? En ese orden van a ir, ¿verdad? Kevin el primero, Ingrid toma el segundo. ¿Quién más? Yo. Ok, Giovanni. You want to take number three? Anyone else? Okay. Uh, let me see. We have, okay, Victor, you're going to take number four. And we're going to have uh, Adriana and Jose. Okay. Five and six. See, Adriana, five, Jose, number six. Okay. You may start if you want, Kevin. Ricky Martin was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico on December 24th in 1971. He was always a performer. As a child, he appeared in television commercials and studied singing. Okay. At the age of 12. In, uh, ah, okay. No, Ingrid, yeah. Ingrid? <laughs> At the age of 12, he joined the Lakin Boys Band. Menudo, he worked hard, wait, then, and he baked bacon became. very well, became very well. Uh, no, but he left the group after five years. After five years, okay. Giovanni? Okay. Martin moved to New York City, but he didn't work for a year. He was very frustrated, so he moved to Mexico City and got a part in a Mexican soap opera. Soon after war, a recorded two Spain language album after this sucker ¿Cómo se pronuncia esta palabra? Super. Success. 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 He moved back to the, the USA. Mm -hmm. US. 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 Okay. Victor? Back, back in the US, he appeared on an American soap opera in, in the Broadway show. Less miserable uh, than he made his first English language album. Okay, Adriana. That album was called Ricky Martin. This is a big hit. Living la, la Vida Loca was on that album. And last but not least, we're going to hear from Jose. Jose Valle. Uh, now he is famous around the world, but he still work hard and he still love singing. As he said to the report for the newspaper USA Today, I want to do this forever. Okay, very good work, guys. Very, very good work. Very good, well coordinated. Bueno, I think that that is going to be closing what was the topics from the platform. Eso creo que era verdad el cierre que íbamos a tener de los temas de la plataforma. El día de mañana vamos a estar teniendo nuestra última clase si todo sale bien. Y la clase sería principalmente acerca de los idioms o las frases idiomáticas, los refranes que se utilizan en inglés, porque eso sería como lo único que podamos cubrir muy probablemente mañana. Así que, eh, I hope you guys are going to be here. Sí, espero ¿verdad? contar con ustedes tomorrow. And then we're going to be closing the whole course. Um, thank you guys once again very much for your attention. Thank you for your participation and dedication during these lessons. 
I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Have a really good night. And bye-bye for bye now. Bye. See you tomorrow. Night. Bye, 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 guys. Bye. Good night.